Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Geekism Studios, our Hollywood Studios slash Universal Studios style park here in Planet Coaster. So first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, first, of, uh, first and foremost, if you pointed out that this thing would stop the door opening, great idea, so I've pulled that forward, made it a little bit more sort of temporary. Um, DL Fendel, the experts with this sort of stuff, pointed out that uh, uh, crew only or staff only is a, bit, is a bit boring and they would probably say something like cast member or film crew or something like that, so I uh, went to do that as well, which is uh, great. Then I'm using some of... Um, Fogs fonts, uh, the awesome Fogs fonts on the workshop. There's a few great fonts as well. Haplo's done some really good ones. Uh, Mass Bandit's got one as well. Um, definitely search for fonts on uh, on the workshop. You'll find some really great ones. Uh, this is his tiny font. It's actually used using baubles, uh, the sort of connecting bit from baubles, which is pretty crazy. Um, but we write the words police station and add those to the police station just because they pop a little bit more than the um, in game signs. Um, I know a lot of people have some issues with the in-game signs, and I am certainly one of those people. I, I, uh, I really quite struggle with them. Um, but there, we've just used the same there. Nine, nine! Well done to the people who uh, spotted that one. So there we go. We now have a nice police station sign there. And then on the other side, we did the same thing using one of these other ones. I think this one's called these fancy fonts. A little bit bigger. Um, again, really great stuff. The, yes, they're going to push your part count up. But I personally think they're really, really worth it. In fact, I used three different uh, what, uh, versions of his fonts in this um, in this episode, to be honest. So this is the second one. Uh, this is his fancy font. We've used his tiny font. We also use his neon font later on as well. So now this becomes a library. We need a little bit of sign, a little bit of stone there, just to kind of cap off this area and give us a uh, area to to add the sign to. I have. Oh God, I don't think I cut the footage out. There is a moment here where I struggle more than life to do something. So uh, we decided to send this into a library and get rid of this really overly sized crap because um, uh, I'll be honest, I got this from Delay Designer. She used books in one of her shots. I think she makes a bookstore. And I was like, oh god, yeah, books. They're a really great small piece that we can use. So uh, here, I'm trying to get this to attach to the building and then edit it. And I don't know if, I, if it's me having a brain fart or if I'm just... Or if the game's just playing up or what, but for some reason I really, really struggle. Eventually we get it, there we go. That doesn't look like it's long because this is sped up like 800 times, but my god, I spent like 5 or 10 minutes just trying to figure that whole thing out. Um, so yeah, we go through and place some blocks. I actually think I need to go back, oops, excuse me for knocking the microphone. I think I need to go back and uh, make these look a little bit more interesting at the moment. I've just kind of copied it across. I was getting so fed up with the building not working. So I'm going to copy in. We're going to copy this uh, sound stage across. And this is the beginning of our first ride. This sound stage actually becomes much bigger. Now the ride itself is actually going to be split across two sound stages just because of how large it's going to be. Uh, this sound stage incorporates the queue and the, um, the the station and the exit and the gift shop. Okay, so uh, this is going to be our first ride, uh, which is Subnautica. We're going to do a Subnautica ride. So if you don't know already, all the uh, the rides in our film studio are not going to be based around films. They're going to be based around game IPs that we have played on the channel. I'm getting loads of comments saying things like, oh, do a Minecraft one, do a Fortnite one, do a this, do a that. It's stuff we've played, okay, because I know the source material better and I think it's just quite a nice way of doing it. Um, so yeah, so if you if you want to make some suggestions, head a look onto the channel and check out the back catalogue. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to be looking at doing Subnautica, uh, Evil Genius, um, City Skylines. We're going. I'm thinking of doing like a stunt show around City Skylines, you know, like a police stunt show or something like that, because uh, I don't really want to do a ride based around it. Uh, so yeah, Sub Subnautica is going to be this, the Robo Arm. Uh, Evil Genius is going to be the Horror Heights. We're going to make a, like a uh, rocket silo out of it. Uh, and then we've got City Skylines. We're going to do a stunt show for it. We're going to do the movies, obviously, uh, as a as a backlot tour, like a typical sort of movie movie studio tour. Uh, we're going to do Surviving Mars. We're going to have that as an actual coaster, uh, a launch coaster where you're sort of launching off to Mars. And um, then probably some smaller attractions based around some of the smaller games we've played. Um, my, I, I'd like to do a, my, I'd like to do my time in Portia, um, or Portia. Uh, I haven't quite figured out how, uh, how that one's going to work yet, but uh, yeah, it's definitely something that I think would work quite well. So we're here, we're adding the queue in then. Uh, one thing I really wanted to try and... Uh, work here was the idea that the the buildings themselves are relatively unthemed they the one thing i've noticed especially with universal studios is to start off with at least the first few attractions you get they're pretty much just um just uh, film studio you know uh, sound stages they call them uh, with a little bit of theming you know some signage some some 
banners and things like that and then this theming itself doesn't actually start until you get inside um, later on obviously their theming becomes a little bit more sort of traditional theme park stuff especially if you look at something like uh, Un um, Universal's Harry Potter world Harry Potter land uh, that's completely uh, themed you know themed buildings and everything there's no, there's no studio lot in sight so uh, that's probably something we're going to try and do here I think we'll start off these first few attractions main, namely being the movie ride uh, and Subnautica here are going to be sort of traditional uh, sound stage buildings and as we get further into the park and the budget increases and this park starts to have to go up against things like Disney and uh, Universal uh, they go and branch out into a bit more sort of generic theming uh, here I'm just grabbing some colours. So basically what I'm doing here is the Subnautica sign. I do the U here on camera uh, and then I decide actually this would work quite nicely for a live stream. So I stop here and then we actually went and built the, uh, the rest of this sign in uh, this week's live stream. So if you want to see in detail how this is done, uh, you can head over. The live stream is up now as a video on demand. Uh, but if not, we're going to be cutting away in just a moment and then um, uh, when we decide that we're not going to do any more. There we go. So... Instead, we're going to come over here and work on the pavement. So this video, uh, we mostly get the queue done, uh, the queue line, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We, we do indoor and outdoor queue, and again, I really wanted to get that, that feel uh, that they have at Universal, where the indoor, the outdoor queue is pretty much cattle pen, um, very light theming, if any, and then as soon as you, you almost sort of step through a portal, uh, and then you're themed into the ride. The one that really comes to mind is the Shrek, which is actually a 4D cinema, but there's a Shrek ride that, uh, the outside of which you're basically cattle pen around a studio um, building, uh, and there's a few like banners around and things to kind of give you that impression of Shrek, uh, if you like wanted posters for Shrek and things like that, uh, but it's very lightly themed, and then you enter a room into the pre-show, and then suddenly you're in a dungeon, and it's all, uh, it's all Shrek, uh, you know, and themed, and also um, across the way from that is the Minions, which is a kind of um, I don't really know what you'd call it. It's a, it's a 4D cinema, but the chairs move and stuff like a, like Back to the Future kind of thing. It's um, uh, also Universal, actually, it's not there anymore. Um, yeah, that kind of that kind of ride uh, again. It's just a sound stage, but then once you go in it, it you're suddenly in Groot's. Um, lab or whatever it is, I don't really know, it's speaking with me very well. <laughs> um, here we're doing the back of the uh, the main street and uh, I'm actually using a technique that DL Fendel taught me about. I, I, I have a feeling I've heard of it before, like a vague recollection of it, um, but it was uh, DL's actually mentioned it numerous times on the channel and I've, I've never um, got around to doing it and that is a thing called Go Away Green uh, and this is a, a Disney Disney concept uh, of using this sort of aquamarine green I guess this sort of a little bit green a little bit gray a little bit blue uh, the idea is that it's a paint that kind of blends into almost everything it blends into foliage those pipes aren't working by the way I'm hoping they patch that um, that's sort of meant to be the back of the Italian restaurant where they cook the pizzas or whatever um, yeah this green is meant to be sort of like it blends into the sky it blends into concrete blends into trees it's kind of like a, a color that just kind of disappears when you when you scan over the horizon and it's often used to cover up sort of bits of uh, backstage that they can't quite get away with their uh, theming or you know the theming itself doesn't quite cover it uh, they use this idea called go away, go away green now disney themselves don't actually um advertise what shades go away green is um but people have had a pretty good guess at it and that's the i found that one there off a off a really great blog actually that told me all about this sort of go away green, go away green concept uh, in more detail and, and they had a, about three or four different suggestions of green they said we think it's going to be something close to one of these and this, that's the idea it's this sort of aquamarine green very sort of inoffensive uh, green color so uh, obviously with a subnautica ride one thing we did want to do is get some uh, water features involved kind of keeping them relatively generic because this is still sort of you know on the on the studios area of the ride you know the ride itself doesn't really properly begin theme wise until we get into the building um but yeah so so water features something i really wanted to kind of uh, bring across here so we actually have a couple this is the first one uh, this actually gets another go in a moment when I add the queue in because it, where the queue works there's a very small path in between the queue and this feature and it doesn't really make sense uh, to have this small path we end up increasing the size of the feature and it just attaches to the queue you'll, you'll see what I mean uh, later on uh, glass is also something I really wanted to use a lot in this build uh, for a few reasons one you know because there's a lot of tanks and things in it you know a lot of water tanks uh, also the glass shows the um, uh, water very well and also it looks quite modern and futuristic um, and also it's new and we haven't used it yet and I wanted to so that's kind of uh, what we're doing here. Having another go at those uh, fountains because the one I use they kind of clip out when you get a bit too close to them so I've gone back and used those uh, the more standard ones and I actually think they look a lot better um, uh, when, we, uh, when we did that anyway. 
So here we uh, start to work on the queue now. I, I was originally going to do a full sort of pre-show, as in like a room that you go into and watch a video or something like that. I decided against it only because I have a really, really sort of... Um, uh, not a good idea, but I have an idea in my head for uh, Evil Genius's pre-show, which is going to be the ride that's most likely next to this one. Um, so I didn't want to do just another sort of video pre-show. And also this ride itself is going to be very sort of heavy on video. So again, I didn't really want to just keep pushing that here. See us, see us extending this now so it attaches to the queue. Um, so instead I've just gone through a, a walkthrough uh, queue where there's some themed areas so uh, you know we have um, you know some robots doing some work and and uh, and then we go into like uh, well you'll see in a moment like an animal containment unit so the idea behind the theme for this ride is um, something that again a lot of rides do uh, in these studio parks and that is sort of continuing the story after the story of the IP um, so if you think of something like Star Tours uh, it's very much based kind of uh, you know within the IP of, uh, of Star Wars, uh, but then you get a lot of others as well where, you know, if it's like an adventure film or something like that, they, they, they're they now doing tours and they say, oh look, you know, in the in the film, or you know, in in, in the past we, we found King Kong, now we're doing tours to go and see King Kong, but it all goes horribly wrong, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm doing here. And also I think it fits Subnautica's um, IP quite well. If you've not played the game, then some of this might be lost on you. Um, but the company that you pay, that you play, work for in the in the game Altera, they are um, incredibly money conscious. They're obsessed with earning money and making money. Um, so I thought the exact thing they would do after having one of their staff stranded on a, a remote alien planet for what may well have been years. We don't really know the time. Um, but uh, you know this this awful alien planet that was being killed off by an alien uh, disease. The first thing they would do when he came back is set up tours to it for a, for a, for a fee. So that's going to be the idea here: is that you are on one of the first uh, official tours, uh, the Al Altera tours to Planet Four Five Four Six B, which I think is what it's called. I might well have got that wrong now. Um, and but then obviously it all goes horribly wrong. Uh, so again, very sort of Star Tours feel, very sort of standard sort of studios. Uh, park feel um, that's kind of what I want to go for so uh, it's going to be very sort of heavy on screens the idea is is that the, the ride itself is going to move through the different biomes of the game so we start in what's called the safe shallows which is kind of you know little fishies pattering about and uh, farty balls if you watch the series that's where they hang out um, I, I, I'm very aware that if, if you haven't watched Subnautica series, a lot of this is going to be lost on you. But you know what? I go on rides where I don't follow the IP and I still enjoy them, so you know that, I, I feel okay with, about it. Um, yeah, These paints have actually changed now. These are done before. We had a little tiny update where they fixed the occlusion with them or something. They had a problem with the parallax or something, which made them much darker than they are, so uh, they've now been fixed. Um, they look a lot, The tarmac one looks a lot better, but the concrete one looks less like the concrete floor, unfortunately. So they've kind of took two steps forward and one step back, but yeah, that's something the tarmac one is a lot better, it looks like it doesn't look as like this brand new tarmac now. So here we're going to keep this very light theme in here, just some palms, uh, really no theme at all to be honest with you, that's just, oh I've just pressed pause, hold on, there we go, um, that's no theme at all there really. Uh, and then here I have a little bit of a play with the ride, uh, I want to get a gift shop in and I want to do the inside of it, this has um, very much been inspired by um, SP Ridley is back on the scene and making content again which is really great to see, he's been away for a little while uh, and he's creating this amazing replica of um, I think it's DC Heroes Park or something, I think it's in Madrid, uh, it's a Spanish park themed around superheroes and he's making this Superman ride um, and the amount of detail he's going to is absolutely ridiculous including a fully themed gift shop with uh, items and it looks just like the original, that, you know he puts pictures up, it's, it really is fantastic um, and it's inspired me to to have a good proper go at an interior gift shop it will not be anywhere near as themed as his um, but it's definitely something I want to have a go at so uh, that small space there is for that and then here um, we basically had a little bit of uh, path that, that, that didn't really work very well so um, I thought a little water feature would do and what we'll probably do is make make a fish out of art shapes or something and place a fish coming out of that. Um, a lot of these parks have very many sort of photo opportunity points um, you know, like uh, like statues, uh, famous cars from movies. I know Universal has like the Back to the Future car and train just kind of sitting there. I mean, it used to be where the Back to the Future ride was, but now it's Simpsons. Um, but they have this sort of stuff. Uh, here we've got a height marker. We actually built that in a live stream for Pinewood. I still haven't got to put them in Pinewood actually, but we're going to use them here as well. Why not? Um, so here we go then, working on the queue. 
trying to sort of box out some areas for little bits of pre-show. Uh, this originally here when I'm doing this slightly uh, setback area was going to be the screen for a pre-show area. Uh, decided against it in the end. I think I go back and actually have another go at this and clear. There we go, and then clear out these two areas that become the sort of uh, pre-show areas to look at. So this first one, uh, this is sort of um, reminiscent of. Um, oh, I forget what it's called now. It used to be called Alien Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter or something like that. It was a, it was a Tomorrowland at Disney, um, and it was horrific, and I, it absolutely scared scarred me for life. Um, they later because it was so scary, <laughs> um, they later rethemed it as Lilo uh, Stitches Escape or something. Stitches Great Escape, I think it was called, um, and it's much better. Well, they say it's much better. I actually think it's quite a poor attraction. I think it's closed now, but it was much less scary, uh, even though it still gave me sort of Vietnam star flashbacks uh, of. Uh, encounter uh, but there's an area as you go in that's got some little robots uh, bothering about and messing the idea is that they're using a teleportation system to bring down aliens to uh, to a uh, uh, I think it's to bring it to like a, 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 a jail I think if I remember rightly but they've got these little aliens partner about and little robots partner about and they're really cute and I thought that would fit quite well here to do like um, like an Altaria entering area where there's a robot just sort of having a little potter about and, uh, and doing uh, doing what he needs to do. So um, I add everything apart from the billboard. I put a billboard in place, but I just need to go and find a high res version of the Altera logo, basically, to go there. Um, we're going to keep most of the billboards outside of the ride, just as um, uh, uh, pictures, uh, just to help save on frame rate. The game doesn't deal very well with lots of video billboards. Uh, obviously, the ones in the ride we can trigger, so they only go off as the ride goes past, so they're not all running at the same time. Um, but here, if they were all videos, it would yeah, it would start drinking uh, drinking frame rate up like it was Mountain Dew. Uh, so we don't do that. I'm just looking at some of the sci-fi pieces. I forget how huge the sci-fi pieces are. Um, the kind of there's good and bad here because one, they are huge and they're going to be really difficult to kind of work into places. Uh, but two, they have a very subnautical look about them. They have a very similar style, uh, which is great because I didn't really want to have to make loads of custom stuff here. I am going to try and make a few custom uh, things like the um, uh, the. Sea, sea Sparrow, we called it in the game, the Sea Moth, and um, and the Prawn Suit. I'm going to have a go at making those custom. How well I get on with them, I don't know, but I'm going to have a go at making those custom. But for the most part, I didn't want to have to make loads of custom stuff, uh, because obviously, you know, this is a secondary park to Pinewood, and we want to keep moving and get stuff done. Um, so yeah, the, the idea here is to keep it moving and keep it, um, you know, keep, keep getting content updates out. Um, so luckily, it's, uh, yeah, like I say, it actually really, um, really closely matches Subnautica's theme, so I can get to use this stuff, which is great, because I don't really use this before at all. Uh, in fact, not many people use this sci-fi stuff, to be honest with you. I, I rarely see a sci-fi build, um, so that's quite nice to be able to have a go at, um, at a different theme for once. Uh, here, then, I'm going to build a uh, fish tank with no fish in it yet. I'm still debating whether or not to try and do some art-shaped fish, because one, I think it would, obviously, you know, an empty fish tank is sad uh, but also the art shaped fish they won't move I'm just I'm not you know I'm not sure they'll look that great to be honest with you so instead we get a bit of movement in there with the plants and bubbles and things like that and, and personally I think it looks better empty um, than having static fish in it but you, I'll, I'll let you let me know in the comments what you think whether or not it's worth trying to uh, create some of the fish uh, from the game um, that goes for the ride as well I'm not sure whether or not whether or not to try and um, make some art-shaped versions of things like farty balls and stuff, or to sort of uh, use the game footage on screens to to get the movement of them themselves. I, I, I I'm verging towards the screen idea because um, the other thing we could do in this game in, in this ride is make out that it's a 4D ride um, or 3D ride that you have glasses on, so the actual um, you know if you rode it. The, uh, the fish would sort of come out at you. Uh, here, obviously, we're going to have to be doing it in 2D, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a thought. So here, I'm trying to use some of the sort of slightly wackier uh, trees and rocks and plants and stuff to kind of give an idea of, a, of an alien tank. I think it actually works out quite well. There's a weird thing you actually get it with the flags, some of the flags as well. When you turn those seaweeds upside down and um, or vines or whatever they're called, they start to move loads. I don't know what it is. The flags do it as well. They stretch and move loads and. It actually works quite well here because it looks like they're, they're sort of flowing in a tide, you know, like we've replicated the tide in a tank. 
uh, so I'm happy about that. Uh, the idea behind this queue then is that this is some sort of like alien containment unit um, or, or animal containment unit. So it's the idea is that the guy, I think his name's Duncan, the guy you play as in Subnautica, has come back from um, from the planet 4546B finally been allowed back to Altair even though he owes a trillion pound or whatever it's meant to be um, trillion credits I think he says at the end of the game sorry spoilers by the way um, and um, he's come back and he talks about this amazing uh, enzyme that cures everything basically and now Altair have got to get their hands on it because they can make a fortune so they go and they grab every animal they can find, uh, every fish they can find and, uh, uh, and try and recreate this enzyme so although obviously Subnautica is a very water-based game and the ride itself will be in water and we have the tank there, um, I couldn't, I didn't think it would be a good idea to do loads of little empty tanks and I remembered that the Adventure Pack gave us these great animals, uh, scorpions, snakes and spiders and they're not the sort of things we'd be able to use much of so I, uh, I, I think they work really nicely here so you know Altera have got gone for uh, fish uh, and also lots of other creatures as well. Uh, so we've got a snake there and I've, I've tried to make them, if, if it allows you to colour them, I've tried to make them really wacky colours so they look a little bit more alien. Um, but yeah, we've got, I think the spiders and the scorpions have to sort of stay black, uh, which is fine. Um, again, we try and use some sort of crazy uh, combinations of plants there to give them a slightly more alien feel. Uh, those are those things there, those vines, you turn them upside down, they start getting a bit wacky. Uh, it actually works quite well for us because we want the idea of them moving in the, uh, in the sun, uh, in the water, sorry. Here, I'm just having to have another little go at this because it's started to clip out the back. Um, so I'm just having to readjust that a little bit. It's still not clipping into the queue, so I think we're good. Um, okay, moving on. Last little bit then. Like I said, this was originally going to be a screen for a um, for a pre-show, full-on sort of pre-show film section. Uh, decide against that, but we have a little gap now. So instead, I make it like a uh, atrium, I guess you'll call it, uh, using some wacky plants. Again, just they're just obsessed with the idea of getting hold of this enzyme that cures everything. Um, so animals and plants. These, if you are a fan of the channel and know from way back when, we had a, um, a stream-only sci-fi park that kind of died a death because I just wasn't particularly a fan of consistently building in sci-fi theme. Um, but we made these sort of uh, alien plants using some lights and different plants and combinations and. I think these actually turned out really quite cool and I completely forgot about them. It wasn't until I was looking for some uh, sort of crazy looking plant ideas that I found them again. So we've used those, which is really nice to be able to use those. And then also there's a few lamps that, that look a little bit um, uh, sort of more like plants, you know, little plants. Uh, it's got a bit of a, an avatar feel, this has this area. I'm really quite happy with how it's turned out. And then we clip off the back of it there so it shows you the plants growing up. Uh, all the blank. Um, walls you see there we are going to add screens to those with uh, various different information about animals and, and, and things like that um, but I didn't just run out of time this week unfortunately uh, so I will get those done in the uh, in the next uh, it, well I'll do those in between episodes here we go so a little bit of detail like I said we're keeping the detail relatively light here the, the screens are going to be the things that really sort of pop out here and, uh, and make the whole place look a bit more interesting and obviously we'll add a few bits of signage there to the plants and animals saying what they are and what we hope they do uh, so now we're cutting to after the live stream so the subnautica sign is done and it's on the wall you'll see just there and again here we are using um fog's font this is smog's neon font this is awesome it uses the edges of the really small neon sign uh, really amazing idea um, the amount of work that must have gone into this I, I dread to think the amount of work it takes me just to get the letters I need and line them all up is ridiculous to be honest um, so the actual amount of work to make the letters would have been uh, crazy I'm sure there we go the ride looks a bit funky until we actually get it where we want it and uh, it, it, it turns out really quite nice the H is a little off there so we just fix that and then we look at lighting it. I really struggle to kind of light the Subnautica uh, sign here. I'm really not sure how to how to do it. Um, eventually settle for. Let's see, I'm looking at doing it from the way, and really just can't get what I'm happy with. Eventually, I find these ones, and these actually work quite well uh, with a light for each letter. Um, actually, gives quite a nice look, and we just have to lift them up and stuff. Um, and they actually work quite nicely. Now, the other thing I really wanted to do with these. Um, with this ride was one thing they often do with these sort of rides is that the outside they try and lightly theme them 
I often think it's because they can, so they can just pull the theming down when the ride changes. Um, so they do things like some signage like this, and then maybe some banners, some posters, that kind of stuff. All stuff that's pretty cheap and will come off quite easily. Um, and there's a really great, huge flag in the game, like a hanging down banner flag. That's absolutely massive and would have no use anywhere in Pinewood Hills and no use, to be honest, in most parks. Um, but they work really well here because they cover the side of the studio and they look exactly like what I hoped they would. And that's just these huge, um, these huge uh, uh, banners that kind of add colour and theming to the area. Uh, before we did that, I completely forgot we did a little sort of airlock entrance here. Uh, so again, this is just kind of the beginning of the full-on theming. Uh, the queue itself does need, still need a little bit of work, but we'll finish that off when we start with the station. Um, so there we go, Altera Tours. We will also make the Altera logo out of some art shapes as well and plonk that in a few places. So here, I have to actually lift this sign up out of necessity so that, the, so that these larger flags fit underneath it. But I think it actually looks loads better lifted up. I, I'm really glad that I, I messed with it because originally I was just going to have it flat on the side of the building. I think it looks so much better lifted up with the scaffold, scaffolding behind it. So uh, here we go. These are just six uh, flags I've uh, made up in Photoshop. And uh, to throw them across, just moving them around so they match up a little bit better. And uh, that's pretty much all the time we have to do. Thank you very much for watching. Here's a few glamour shots for you. Uh, I'm going to have to wrap up really quick because the baby just woke up. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, give us a like. It really does help at the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop those in the comments. And if you fancy checking find me on Twitter, I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.